Well, sorry that we've had to change this Sunday. If you're tuning in, uh, the air conditioning units, both of them in the main sanctuary have gone out. So we're having to uh, avoid the heat in the sanctuary by asking you to stay home, but also asking you to tune in if you can. So we will have it fixed by next weekend, so this won't happen again, I hope. Never had both units go out at the same time, uh, but you know, it uh, seems to be the mechanical situation is that worked against our service this morning. But praise the Lord, we can still meet and have a good time over the airwaves. Uh, I hope you're having a good day and life is treating you well, and I hope that your day even becomes better uh, as you begin to. Uh, turn the day over to God and listen to His Word and uh, apply it to your life. We are uh, going to be uh, speaking today out of Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 11, and, and back down through 17 as a mini-series, uh, calling it the Art of Discipleship. And the title of the message this morning is Ouch. Uh, but before we do that, the joke of the day, uh, I read in the uh, Reader's Digest, a little quote here. Muslims do not recognize the Jews as God's chosen people. Jews do not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Protestants do not recognize the Pope as the leader of the Christian world. And the Baptists do not recognize each other at the liquor store. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, One of the uh, most difficult professions I've ever been in in my life has been that of horse training. You know, some professions are mental, some professions are physical, uh, some professions like uh, ambulance driver and uh, fireman and other jobs can be very emotional. Uh, and there are those that, that can be spiritual, but I found in being a horse trainer, it kind of involves all that. You're, you're working real hard, but you've got to have a mental sharpness. You've got to be physically shaped. Uh, you've got to be emotionally tied, not only to yourself, but to the animal. But there's some uh, spiritual aspects of it. Uh, the art of training is no different than the art of discipleship. Uh, a person who is uh, headed down the road of discipleship training is going to find themselves under all of that strain of emotional, mental, physical, uh, and spiritual. And in fact, uh, Paul is going to share with us about that, that uh, we're going to begin to find uh, some things in training uh, uh, for discipleship or even, as, you, as I said, in horses. Uh, there's going to be a lot of failure and a lot of the success, a lot of sorrow and a lot of joy, a lot of disappointment, a lot of satisfaction. There's going to be those moments of really feeling stupid and suddenly gain understanding. And then there's going to be those times of pain and relief. Sometimes it's more of one than the other. I found as I've trained horses or even as I've worked for the Lord. Sometimes you may be facing more pain than you would be uh, uh, relief or you're facing more uh, failure than you are uh, understanding and so uh, that's something we need to understand in our lives as Christians as we live that life uh, that uh, it's not always balanced and it was never promised to be balanced that you'd always have more joy than sadness or you'd always have more uh, peace than and turmoil or you'd always have more uh, strength and weaknesses uh, but one of the things you do need to realize that each of those are a season and they come and go uh, sometimes in training you feel more of a failure than a success after a good rouse with a horse. Uh, you get one that uh, kind of has won the battle, you really feel uh, like you're a failure at the moment. And, and then uh, depending on how, how bad he won the battle, uh, along with that failure, you could feel a lot of pain after uh, being bucked off and landing on the ground and hitting very hard and hitting in the wrong way in the wrong spots. Uh, the, the author of Hebrew is going to share with us the same thing. Uh, 
uh, that just as disciple trainers have pain and difficulty, so will those who are disciple trainers. He makes this statement here in verse 1, For the moment all discipleship seemed painful rather than pleasant. He, he was sharing with us that during his training of, a, of being a disciple, that he's found it more difficult, more painful at this point in his life than he has pleasant. Sounds to me like he's been kicked a lot, bucked a lot, stoned a lot, bitten. Uh, sounds like he, he probably needs some some mandates. Make sure they're ouchless. I uh, I, I know uh, I remember growing up as a kid. Mom would always say, "You want me to? Where's the boo boo? And do you want me to kiss it?" And then she put a band aid on it, and you know it felt good until the band aid was to come off, and you grab it and you pull that, and it'd be pulling the hairs up on your arm, and uh, uh, it was very painful. Uh, so when they came out with Alshon's band-aids, man, I was just excited. I thought, that's a great thing. Paul goes on to share uh, kind of how the fight left him. Uh, we have drooping hands. It's a, a sign of uh, despondency, depression. Uh, your hands are dragging. Uh, weak knees. Uh, they, there's no strength left to, to do what you need to do. And, and wobbly feet. Uh, he was sharing with us that those things we need to watch out for as we Face, face things of uh, failures in our life that uh, the pain of, uh, on the pain side of uh, discipleship. We won't have probably time to go into it today, but <clears throat> probably I'd like to share two thoughts of the four here in Hebrews 12 and 11 through 17. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say discipling always has its ouchy moments in one's life. There's always going to be times that it is painful, it is unpleasant, uh, <clears throat> where the uh, hair has been ripped off and the, the uh, wounds have been exposed and sometimes bumps are touched, which, which hurts. And that's what I want to talk about this morning is the ouchies of our life and, and what is it they need to produce? What 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 is God's intentions? Because Really, disciples, discipleship training isn't unpleasant. There is a benefit side to it, in fact, as the scripture tells us that, that <clears throat> there, there will be a, a point in time that uh, uh, there will be pleasant things out of it. <clears throat> so with that, we start here in verse 1. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. And then in Romans 8, it says, As far as it concerns you, be at peace with everyone. Do not seek your own vengeance, but leave room for the wrath of God. For he has said, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. I, uh, I think so often as I read that scripture about peace, how we as uh, ranchers have to learn to keep peace on the ranch. Uh, not only with the human contingency, but you also with the animals. Uh, you have some animals that it doesn't matter who they're put with and who they're out to pasture with. Uh, they seem to get along with uh, everybody. They don't ever seem to have any problems. Then you have some that, uh, you know, get along with most people, but they have a problem with uh, this one or that one. And sometimes it's during feeding or uh, sometimes when you're out in the pasture and you're petting one, another one gets upset because it's not being petted. Uh, so there's different reasons why it happens. Uh, but you begin to learn uh, what animals go together and what animals work well together and what animals need to be put in a different pasture. Uh, what, what you want to do as a, a herdsman is, is to create peace to, and, and maintain the peace if you have it out in the pasture. Uh, so you, you sometimes it means changing the animals around. When we first buy a horse, we uh, kind of put them together and see how they'll react and what happens. And first thing that takes place when you put animals together, they have to relearn the pecking order. And the one who's just been put in is trying to learn his position in the herd, if he's at the top or at the bottom or exactly where he fits in. So there's a lot of nipping and, and kicking and uh, carrying on in the group. and. 
uh, as they're trying to dom uh, dominate their status. And uh, then you begin to see the true nature of each of the animals as they go through that process. And you kind of watch them because if the one that you put in there is not going to get along well with them, you need to take him out and uh, sometimes give him some time to acclimate. Sometimes they don't need to be in there. Uh, I've got one horse that I keep by himself, his name's Bert, and he's just an antagonizer. He's just one of those that just kind of likes to keep the pot stirred up. It just seems to be there's, uh, when any activity's going on, he, he's making sure other things are happening during that activity to keep the other horse, horses stirred. So he'll sneak up and bite one, or he'll sneak up and kind of push one, or kick one, or uh, come running at him like he's going to get him. And, uh, it just keeps them on the, the edge of their toes and uh, we found we don't like that with our herd. It creates sometimes, uh, can cause some illnesses in them and cause colic, which is uh, very dangerous for a horse. It's a stomach uh, disorder that can lead to death and so uh, you want to relieve that pressure from them and that's gotten from a lot of anxiety or things taking place. So you want to remove that antistic animal and, and uh, put them in a pen. You do not need an animal with other animals that destroy the peace in the pen. And Paul is saying the same thing to us as Christians as we live our lives. He, he is saying strive as a person. Uh, in other words, struggle, attempt to uh, keep peace in your life, but not only to keep peace in your life, but to help to keep peace in others help people to have peace, not only within themselves, but have peace with others. So that, that kind of means to me we're, we're a little bit of, in herd management there as we deal with our friends and our family and acquaintances and church and work. Uh, it's kind of our job to uh, strive toward maintaining the, keeping the, shall we say, the pasture area uh, or the office area, the school area or the home area free free of uh, strife and struggle, but uh, maintain the peace. Uh, that means we need to go all out for it. Uh, do everything we can to preserve that peace. That's why Jesus said that he wants us to be peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called the children of God. And in fact, in this scripture, if we look at it, it goes on to say that uh, if we aren't peacemakers, if we aren't working and striving to bring peace, to have peace, and to keep uh, the peace in the, the field, in the home, in the office, and uh, in the church, uh, then what's going to happen? He said, there's going to be others who will not see the Lord because of our inability to show what peace is. In fact, peace reveals one of the characters of God, and as we are peaceful, and as we uh, help bring peace, we, we bring that characteristic to people, and help them to learn uh, who Jesus is. So he says, strive for the peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be guilty of that scripture of the last part of living my life so no one saw the Lord. Because we are his mirror images here on earth. Uh, he is the sun that is shining and we are the moons that attract that that light and we radiate it down into others. So uh, be sure you're a peacemaker and be sure you're striving to keep peace. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the next scripture there and it says, see to it that no one fails to attain the grace of God. Well, that's a pretty hard job to do. Uh, that's in Hebrews 12, 15a. Also says, he who derives a person of uh, a, a person has no sense, but an understanding man keeps his tongue. Fools show their annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an offense. Uh, that last verse is Psalms, uh, excuse me, uh, Proverbs 12, uh, and then the one who derives is in Proverbs 11. Uh, but it, it, it speaks of. Uh, our attitude of, of how we give grace, how we receive grace, and how we help others find grace. Uh, one of the most uh, 
stressful times often in a horse's life is because we have changed their behavior is feeding time. Normally their feeding time is all day long out in the pasture, but we've taught them to come to us for grain or other morsels of tidbits, and so they come running up. And uh, through this whole process, you have piles you put out trying to separate it up just to make sure each horse gets his amount of feed. And so there's a lot of running back and forth. There's a nibbling on one pile and then running over to another pile and running that horse off and eating of that pile. And, uh, just it gets to be a vicious circle sometimes for 10 or 15 minutes of, of horses just running and moving one another around. Uh, you you want to spread out the feed so each has its own spot because if you don't, if you just have one pile there, the dominant horse is going to uh, be there over that pile protecting it and needing it and none of the other horses will get it. Uh, so there won't be an equal uh, amount given to each horse. Uh, and of course, some horses uh, want more feed than others, so sometimes one will eat it quicker so he can get over to some other, other person's pile and, and eat their feed. And so I found sometimes it's my job to make sure that there's room at the trough. And that's the, the second point I want to make. Uh, as we deal with uh, being herdsmen or, or being husbandry with uh, people, it's no different than animal. We want to make sure there's room at the trough of God. God has, has laid out gifts for us. He has laid things there uh, for us to uh, share in and to have. And one of those gifts He has given us is grace. And He wants to see that each person uh, has His uh, amount of grace. And in fact, that's what He says. He says He's given to each man amount of grace, so let not uh, a man... Uh, think himself so highly because he's got grace and he thinks he's got more than another. Uh, but our job is to make sure that each person is getting their amount of grace that God has dispensed to them. Of course, one of the ways sometimes I have to do that, I have to stand in the middle of all the horses while they're eating, carrying on. I've got to soothe them down and I've got to uh, make the one that's going to make the others run or, or move around. I've got to get him settled and happy where he is so that the others can get the feed. Uh, as I thought about that, it's no different than with grace. Uh, we, we've got to move people toward Jesus Christ. We, we've got to show them where the trough is and uh, we, we've got to lead them to that point and we've got to take away the other irritations and the other things that may be involved in their life that will uh, keep them from receiving that grace. Uh, move things around, move, move the people around so that uh, their, God's grace is sufficient for them because that's His promise to us. And, and God wants each of us to obtain grace, but also He wants each and every person to uh, have that grace that He's dispensed to us. And we've got to ask ourselves, what do I need to do to help those around me uh, receive that grace of God? And, and that even may be to the point of salvation because it is by grace we are saved through faith. Uh, we've got to make sure if, if anybody is going to be saved, they've got to find that grace. They've got to, they've got to come to, the, to the, the, the place that God has put it in and given it to us uh, and allowed us to live there. So, so being disciples as we train, we find that there's two key areas starting out. First of all, we strive to bring peace. We strive to see that people are at peace. Uh, we try to remove all the turmoil, all of the uh, anguish. Uh, we try to bring to them a peaceful heart, peaceful thoughts. And then it is to see that everybody obtains grace. Uh, that is to lead them to the proper place. Uh, just you would lead a horse to his food pile, you, you sometimes lead individuals to their grace pile. And, and a, a, you may not make him eat, but you can lead him to the pile and sooner or later a horse will eat and drink. I've learned that. Uh, so God asked us to do that, to be peacemakers and to be grace givers. And uh, I hope you do that this week as you live your life and as you uh, run into people that you uh, begin to uh, train yourself as a disciple 
and in two of those areas is, is those two we talked about. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for being part this morning. Uh, hopefully uh, we will see you next Sunday, uh, right and early at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you uh, were planning on coming and uh, missed it, I'm sorry. Uh, we tried to get them working and going, but we've got a compressor out and a computer board out and they've had to be ordered. Uh, the other thing is if you would like to give and weren't able to, uh, there's people outside waiting this morning at the church. They'll be more than happy to take your money uh, and, and uh, say a prayer over you. Uh, or you can mail it in or you can go to PayPal. Uh, we thank you for your gifts. It is through your gifts that this ministry is sustained. Uh, continue to bless this ministry so that we can continue to reach out to the lost for Jesus Christ. Uh, let us go in prayer if we would. Father, we thank you for those that uh, are here with us this morning, for those that have set aside a time to listen to your word. Uh, I pray, O oh Lord, that as, as the scripture says, your word re never, never returns void. Don't let it. Lord, let it take root in their hearts right now. Help them to be uh, men and women of peace. Help them cease the strife of people around them and help help them lead people to peace. And secondly, uh, help them lead people to find grace. Uh, it, is, it is imperative that we as your children, especially as disciples, help people find grace for without grace they cannot be saved. And our job here is to make disciples and that means they've got to be led to the Lord. So Lord, help us take on these two responsibilities. Help us to handle them with great care and dexterity. And help us, oh Lord, uh, plant those seeds so that they begin to grow and mature in other people's lives. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Amen.